What's up, adventurers? Welcome back to Adventures Never Far Away. This <laughs> was so weird. <sighs> Still working on an intro. Now, when you're traveling to a big city, especially when it's the first time, it can seem really intimidating. There is so much to see and do, and everyone you talk to is going to give you their own opinion on what they think that you would be interested in. Now, I've learned that unless that person knows you almost better than you know yourself, their opinions are just that. Their opinions. When you start planning your trip and you start doing your own research, it can feel overwhelming. And I get it. I've been there. I travel to big cities all the time and big cities in my home country. Newsflash, I have figured out the secret sauce to visiting big cities for the first time. And while everyone's travel style is different and I'm no exception, I'm still gonna give you some major tips for your first visit to Chicago. These tips will hopefully help you on your trip to Chicago, help you maximize your time, get a feel for the city, and help you get a little more comfortable traveling to big cities. These tips are generic enough so that you can utilize them with other trips, but I'm gonna focus primarily on Chicago because that was my latest big city that I visited for the first time. Tip number one, you wanna do basic research. And what I mean by that is you wanna look at a map. You wanna look at the layout of the city. You wanna figure out where you're gonna be staying and where the center of town is. Now, obviously this day and age, there are lots of different parts of a big city that make it what it is, such as the different boroughs of New York City or even neighborhoods in San Francisco or Chicago, like I experienced. You wanna familiarize yourself with the layout broadly. You don't have to have everything memorized, but if there are certain landmarks that a city has, Chicago has a river, you kinda of wanna use that as a guide so that when you are going down the road and planning and actually discovering the town for the first time, you have a basic idea of where you are and what's around. Okay, the next tip is to get a public transportation card. Use public transit. Parking and driving in Chicago is absolutely insane. And having a public transportation card allows you freedom and flexibility. Now, depending on your length of stay, you could get a multi-day pass. So this one was cheaper for me to get a seven-day pass instead of a three-day pass, which is actually what I needed. But it was like $5 cheaper. And it allows me unlimited rides on all trains and buses, which is great because if you're navigating a new city, you're gonna get lost. <laughs> you're gonna get on the wrong train, you're gonna get on the wrong bus, there's gonna be detours. And having a pass rather than paying per ride will save you time, hassle, and money. Trust me on that one. Okay, so my next tip is super delicious. Try the local food. When you're traveling, for most people, you're gonna be out of your element. It's different from your norm, and so it becomes easy to find something that's familiar and latch onto it, such as a restaurant, a fast food restaurant, or a particular type of snack. So this tip ties back into tip number one of doing your research. So you wanna find out, what is your city known for? What is your city famous for? I went to Chicago. I knew going into this that I wanted to try Chicago deep dish pizza. And so that's what I did. That's what I sought out. I did a little bit of research and I ended up going on a really awesome pizza tour where we went to four different locally owned pizzerias and tried so many different types of pizza. I learned so much about the history of Chicago, but also the history of pizza and the evolution and why it plays such a big role in what Chicago is today. So think about where you're going. If you're gonna be going to Boston, San Francisco, Milwaukee, what are these places known for food-wise? And then try that out. You never know if you're gonna like it until you try it, so you might as well try it. One thing I do wanna caution you about though is when you're researching gastronomic places within a city that you're trying, 
yes, there's always gonna be really nice and really fancy restaurants with you know famous chefs. I was going to Chicago, I was thinking, oh, I wanna go eat at the Girl and the Goat. Chef Izzard. Mm, couldn't get a reservation. But then I thought, what do the locals eat? And that's where I went. Even though it's super easy to revert back to what's familiar, when you're traveling, you're seeking out new experiences. And that includes what you're eating. So try something new. If you don't like it, if it's a bad experience, go to a supermarket and get something comfortable. Okay, my next tip, and also this kind of goes across the board whenever you travel, is you want to arrive early. If you have an opportunity to book a time slot, you wanna get the earliest time slot possible. Here I am, the Museum of Science and Technology, I think, just south of Chicago on a Saturday. It's gonna be crazy, but I booked at the earliest time possible, which is 9.30. Now my last big tip for you is to get a city pass. Now I know that there's gonna be a lot of talk online if you're doing your research saying why you should or shouldn't get a city pass, but hear me out. When you go to a big city, big city, there's always gonna be so much to do. It's going to be so overwhelming and you're gonna to wanna to do everything you possibly can. You're gonna run yourself to the ground trying to do every single thing. Or you'll get that FOMO, that fear of missing out, thinking that if you don't go to these certain places that you know this friend or this friend recommended, then you didn't do a city right. So in my case, I didn't know anyone that had been to Chicago and had the same travel style that I did. So while people were still making recommendations, I listened to them and I weighed them against my travel style. And it was really interesting because I had to stop and think and close my mouth and bite my tongue because what I wanted to say was, don't you know me at all? Does that sound like anything I would be remotely interested in doing? It happens every single time I travel. So I've learned just to listen, say thank you, make a note, and be on my merry way. <laughs> city passes are designed for people going to the city for the first time. It takes the best of a particular city and puts it all together in one spot for you to take advantage of. Getting a city pass helps take away some of that decision fatigue that you will experience when you travel because you have to make decisions about every single thing you do, about how you're getting places, where you're going, what time, are you gonna talk to this person? Are you gonna try this, 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 this? Having a city pass kind of takes everything and puts it together in one bundle that you can pick out before you go. I picked the Chicago City Pass. In it lists the different types of activities that are paid for by the pass and then gives me a few options. And having a city pass allowed me to have a little bit of museum, a little bit of observation deck, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it gives me just the highlight reel of the city so that the next time I go, I don't have to worry about doing those things because I've already done them. Or it gives me the opportunity to revisit them because sampled a little bit now i want to go back and dive right in thanks for tuning in adventurers like i mentioned these tips i tailored specifically to chicago but they're broad enough that you can take them and use them in any city that you visit these are the exact same steps that i took when i went to boston by myself when i went to new orleans with some girlfriends when i went to seattle by myself when i went to oahu by myself I hope you find it useful and I can't wait to share more about my trip to Chicago with you. So go on out there and have an adventure. <laughs>